everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. Today we are recapping Survivor Season 35 H3 Episode 5, The Past Will Eat You Alive. As always, I will reveal the person who got voted out as well as the outcome of challenges. So if you have not yet watched Episode 5, you need to go do that and come on right back here. We open up this episode with Joe still puffing his chest up and so proud of himself for his gameplay. And Ashley is playing right into it because she's like still stunned that Alan is gone and Joe loves every second of it. So I don't know if they don't have enough material for this episode or what, but we kind of have this whole scene about PTSD with Ben. Lauren put a piece of bamboo on the fire and it pops real loud and uh, it was really freaking Ben out and Ben's an ex-marine as you know. You know, it felt pretty bad for him but they gave a lot of airtime, which makes me think they didn't have a lot of material. We start off with a, a reward challenge and this one is for iced coffee and pastries and then like tea and coffee to take back to your camp. In the beginning, you have uh, one of the one of your team has their wrists and ankles tied together and they have to kind of slither through the sand, through these little hills and dips and on their stomachs pushing a ball with their nose. And so uh you know, everyone's just getting covered in sand and some are better than others. Some are really struggling. And for the yellow team, Ryan just cannot do it. He, he'll he get to a certain point where he's going uphill, and then he, the, he loses the ball, and it rolls back down again, and he's got to scoot his way over, back up again. And, and you know Ryan is just this tiny little wisp of a guy. When he finally gets to the, to the mat and tags off, then they get to a point where they have to undo their shackles and then everybody has to get on the mat before they can start the next part of it, which is throwing balls up into this really high basket. Even though they're in last place, the yellow team has to hurry and, you know, maybe try to at least get second place, right? So, oh my God. Poor Ryan is just spent and he's just kind of laying in the sand like a limp noodle. And JP just comes by and like without, without losing his stride, just kind of plucks him out of the sand like a toddler. Blue team ends up winning this challenge. Red team comes in second and yellow is last place. Back at the blue camp, they're eating all their pastries and drinking tea and everything. I know this is probably just my issue, but Desi, I wanted to wash Desi's face so bad. She still had sand all over and around her eyes and, I mean, at least wash your eyes. Back at Yellow's camp, Ryan is playing the lovable goof and, you know, really that's kind of his only option at this point. He just made it obvious that he's terrible in challenges. And so his social game has to be on point. Back at the Red Tribes camp, Cole is channeling Winnie the Pooh hard. He is sneaking into this big pot of jam and he's, you know, got his like big paws in there and he's licking his hands and looking around, sneaking it. Oh my God, Cole. Sweet, sweet Cole. He is playing a very opposite game from Ryan. Cole's good in challenges, but his social game? Oh, that could use some work, baby boy. Lauren, who just cracks me up. Lauren thinks that Cole, Cole's eating habits are very bad. He's like a pig. He just licks everything. Okay. Our, don't know that pigs are known for their licking, but uh, maybe. So Jessica, the virgin nurse, is heading to go get water with Mike. And again, to the confession cam, she's questioning whether she shouldn't maybe just get closer with Mike because she can trust him and not so much with Cole because, um, well, Cole is Winnie the Pooh. So they're at the well getting the water and she and Mike were talking about how Joe had found the hidden immunity idol at the other camp and that, hey, they should look at the well here too. 
And I'm thinking, why don't, why did you say that out loud? Because yes, you should look at the well. Anyway, I think, you know, she thinks she can trust Mike anyway. Uh, of course, he's digging all around while she's stuck filling the water jugs. If I were her, I would have done it the other way around. Whatever. So he's digging all around the well. And sure enough, Mike finds the hidden idol. Next, we go to the immunity challenge and Red wins again. They are dominating these immunity challenges. That's the that's Ben, Lauren, Jessica, Mike, and Cole. And they are killing it. Again, they're way ahead of everybody else. They win. Blue team comes in second, thank God, because that's the team that Devin's on, and Devin is really cute. So we don't want to lose him anytime soon. So it is the yellow tribe with Ryan, Chrissy, JP, Allie, and Rourke. They are on a terrible losing streak. And this time, it's kind of Chrissy's fault. Chrissy pulled a Patrick. She had, was trying to do this balancing thing and get the balls in there, and she would not give up her turn. So back at their camp, Chrissy pulls Rourke aside to talk to her. And first, she's kind of like blowing smoke up her skirt and telling her, you know, I see you as the most strategic player here. And Rourke's kind of like not knowing how to take that. Not only does Rourke want Chrissy out, but Rourke feels like Chrissy never came to talk to her before now. And she thinks Chrissy feels like her head's on the chopping block because she did so poorly in the challenge. And Chrissy should feel nervous, but that is not the way Chrissy rolls. Mm -mm. She doesn't, I don't think she, it occurs to her at all that she should maybe be the one to go. She's not apologizing for the challenge or anything. So anyway, back to this conversation. She says, I'm wondering if you would like to work with me to get the guys out. Would that be something you would consider? And, okay. Rourke is not gonna win any Academy Awards here. Um, Rourke says, um, yeah, sure, of course. Well, Chrissy's not an idiot. So Chrissy immediately knows something's fishy. And if Chrissy didn't want Rourke out before, she sure as heck does now. So she immediately goes back to JP and she says, what do you think about getting Rourke out? JP says, um, I, I don't know. She's pretty good at challenges. That's not the answer Chrissy wants to hear. So Chrissy tells him that it was Rourke's idea to have an all-girl alliance and immediately flips and says, oh, well, then she's got to go. <laughs> then Chrissy goes over to Ryan and tells him she wants Rourke out. And then Ryan realizes that he is in the position of the swing boat. This is tricky. You might think, of course, he's just going to go with Chrissy and JP and get Rourke out because he has no alliance with Rourke. However, if he does that, he's going to get his other alliance, Allie, mad at him. If he were to go with Allie and Rourke and get Chrissy out, Chrissy will be gone and he won't have somebody still in the game who now feels like he betrayed them. So he's got some thinking to do. And this whole thing is making me really nervous because Rourke is my pick to go to the end. Yeah. When I saw her in the very first challenge helping her other healers win that challenge, and she was real quiet about it, but she guided Mike and Desi on how to do that balance board thing with the ball and they kept, it kept falling, it kept falling, and Rourke was telling them very quietly and calmly, when there's a little railing, lean it against the railing, and then switch over, lean it against the railing, that's how you're gonna get down to the end. They, they followed her directions, and they ended up coming from behind to win, and that was episode one. And so I just always had that in my mind that I think she's smart and she lays low. And I think that's a good recipe for getting to the end. So this is making me really nervous. This is too early to have my pick go home. So off they head to tribal council. And Allie and Rourke both have some harsh words for Chrissy. Allie says to her, I think we lost the challenge. You should have passed off to somebody else when you were struggling to balance. Now Chrissy claims that she tried several times to get somebody else to take over and nobody wanted to do it. Okay. 
I don't know if if that happened or not, but I do know that the camera caught a time when somebody asked her, do you want to switch out? And she, I'm telling you, she was like Patrick. She was in the zone, not even listening and get, getting back up on the balancing thing. She wasn't even paying attention. Then Chrissy said how she went to talk to Rourke before Tribal, and then Rourke kind of blasted her for only coming to her at the 11th hour and never talking to her before that. So they go to vote and... I lose my girl Rourke. Ah, oh, I was so mad. Chrissy just had that little smirk on her face like she knew this was going to happen. And you know what? I actually, I knew it was going to be Rourke. The minute Jeff asked her if she felt like the swing vote or the target, and she said, tonight I feel like the swing vote, I was like, oh, <laughs> I just knew that is going to come back to bite you in the butt. You have to respect Chrissy's gameplay. She's playing dirty, but she's playing hard. And you just might have to to get far. So that's where we end episode five. I hope you enjoyed this recap. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and please subscribe to Jill Informed if you haven't already. Oh, and please comment down below. I would like to know who you've picked to win this game or maybe tell me who your final three are. And as always, please join me right back here every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Central Time for the next recap of Survivor. See you next week. Bye-bye.